Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. We're back with another kind of budgeting video with 10 things that I do not do in order to save money every single month and stick to my budget. It is raining, it is thundering, it's gonna happen, you're gonna hear it, it might be loud, we're gonna roll with it. With everything being so stupid expensive these days, I, we are always looking to save as much money anywhere we can, even if it's just a little bit of money here and there, because those little purchases, the, those little savings add up to something really impactful. And so if we are sticking to our monthly budget, then we are making a big impact you know, in our future. These are all of my personal things that I do not do. Hopefully you find these helpful. 10 things that I don't do in order to stick to my budget because it has been a learning process. It has been a journey, if you will, through you know learning how to budget and learning how to save money and being disciplined. Like it's been a journey and I'm still on it, okay? But I'm just gonna share with you a couple things that I no longer do and it has really helped me stick to my budget every single month. So first, I don't have my credit cards saved on my phone or on my computer. I know with like certain products you can have a credit card saved. You can do like an Apple wallet or something, but I don't do that. I don't do it because I want it to be a little less convenient for me to make online purchases. When it's so convenient that you just kind of tap your phone, it almost makes it too easy to impulse buy online or it's almost too easy to just buy things <laughs> even if it's not an impulse. I like that one extra step where I have to go. It's not just one. It's a couple extra steps. I have to go physically get my wallet and get my card out of my wallet and type in the number. And during all of this time, I get to think to myself, do I really want to put in this level of effort to buy this item? Do I really need this item? When there are more barriers to get through. I learned that in marketing, like barriers to entry kind of thing that's introducing a product into the market. But there's like barriers to the purchase, right? If there's too many barriers, people will give up and not buy the item. Sometimes you have to create your own barriers. When I have something saved in my phone and I can just click and boom, it's charged to my credit card, I need a couple more barriers. There have been plenty of times where I'm online shopping and I go to check out and I have to go get my credit card and I think, mm, Maybe I don't really need this. Let me give it some time. I don't come back and buy it because I realize I don't really need this or I don't need this right this second. You know, maybe I can wait for next month and put it in the next month budget if I'm already over for this month. It's that immediate gratification, that immediate purchase that I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to give myself more barriers. And with that, it has helped me save money. It's helped me stay within my budget because Oftentimes it's too easy, you just click a button on your phone and boom, it's purchased. I like to have that extra step so I do not save my credit card information on my computer or my phone. I just like to make it a little bit more difficult for myself. Kind of going off of that, I don't buy online purchases whenever I want. So a great tip that I have seen and we are starting to enact enact it on our lives. We're starting to do this thing where there is a designated day that you make like your Amazon purchases, for example. A lot of times it's really easy to just add something to the cart in Amazon and then go ahead and buy it because it's gonna be here overnight, maybe it's here in two days, and it's just, again, that convenience factor. And a lot of the time you're not buying something astronomically expensive from Amazon. Most of the time, maybe you are, I'm not. But if I'm buying something that's $20 here and $30 here, maybe $15, all of these little purchases, they add up. And if you see that grand total, <laughs> that grand total in your Amazon cart, you can kind of think to yourself, actually that's way more than I'm wanting to spend right now. But when you're doing those little purchases, right, you're not really thinking that this is a lot of money. It's $15 here, it's $20 here, but when you, save all of those purchases. Maybe it's once a week, maybe it's once a month where all of those purchases that you're adding to your cart, you see the grand total and think, okay, where can I cut 
things out. And that's where I like to be. I like to really think about the purchases I'm making, the items I'm purchasing and think, do I really need this? And again, most of the time I will cut things out. I'll put them in the safe for later or I'll just say, you know what? I don't really need this or I can get this cheaper somewhere else. I'm trying really hard to get rid of my that convenience factor of online purchases because if it's too convenient, I'm going to spend more money. And that's probably what it's designed to do, okay? Of course, I have to say there are always emergencies and Amazon is a great resource. I'm gonna give an example. Our AC went out in the middle of summer where it is hot here, okay? We live in North Carolina and it has been a pretty hot end of summer. So our AC went out and we needed a new capacity capacitor. I always want to say capacitator and I've been reminded lovingly by my husband so many times that it's capacitor. Okay, capacitor. We needed a new capacitor. So we went ahead and bought one on Amazon because we were going to fix it ourselves and by ourselves I mean he was going to fix it. That in that case of an emergency, we know it's going to come the next day or in 2 days. Then we just go ahead and buy it, right? We're not going to wait till the end of the month to buy it because AC is really important when you live in the south and it's summertime. So of course there are emergencies, but I would argue the vast majority of our Amazon purchases, personally, personally, the vast majority of our personal Amazon purchases are not emergencies like that. So we don't just buy online stuff whenever we feel like it. We have a designated day and really seeing that grand total is gonna help you <laughs> stay within your budget because like I said, those little purchases add up. I don't just buy things and not know where my money goes every single month. So I have said this before in a previous video that I will link down below my more budgeting tips. We track all of our expenses in a lovely spreadsheet. We save all of our receipts, the paper receipts. I have some, they're not right here, but they're downstairs. We have paper receipts that we save and we manually input it into our spreadsheet. There are definitely apps where you can scan it and put it in that if that's what you want, okay? I need the manual entering to really help me think about the purchases and really help me see where the money's going. I need, again, that extra step of manually putting in a spreadsheet, but I know there's other more convenient ways of tracking expenses every single month, but we track our expenses anytime we buy anything. If it is a $2 drink from, I mean, I don't know where you're buying a $2 drink from, I don't know, the grocery store, we're putting it in there. And we have different categories and it's all nice and organized and it is nice and organized thanks to Prior Digital. So I have partnered with them and they have let me try out their different products, their uh, different budgeting and finance products and I will link them down below. I am an affiliate for them, but I personally use their family budget plan. I will put a picture of it on the screen because I can't remember the exact title of what it's called. I think it's like premium family annual budget thing. We personally use that for our own budgeting. That's our spreadsheet. That's, you can track all of your expenses, you can track savings and all everything that you need. Everything you need is in this spreadsheet. I will say there's a learning curve. Watch the tutorial, it's a lot, but once you get it, it makes it so easy to really see where your money is going. And that's important. <laughs> that's important if you're going, whoa, that was bright lightning. That like shook the house. Baby's still asleep, thank goodness. Not knowing where your money is going is probably why you can't stick to your budget. That was me. I'm speaking to myself right now. Not knowing where my money was going and I'm wondering why I'm not saving every single month is because I'm not staying on top of it. I'm not tracking it. Like I said, I use the spreadsheet. I manually enter everything in. There are other apps or more convenient ways of doing it, but track your expenses, track what you're spending, even your fixed expenses, your rent, your mortgage, your car payment, insurance, all of that stuff, track it all and really see how much you're spending every single month. It's so important. So I never just buy things without knowing 
that I'm going to track it, not knowing where my money is going. I don't shop at expensive grocery stores. In case you didn't know, I know it's breaking news, but grocery bills, <laughs> grocery costs are stupid expensive. So the cost of everything has gone up so much. I would say especially groceries and just food items, we've seen the biggest impact there probably. Our grocery bill is something that we struggle with every single month with going over, right? So one way to combat this is not shopping at these specialty grocery stores, these expensive grocery stores, right? We are not Whole Foods people. We are Aldi people. We are Walmart people. We shop at cheaper grocery stores. I have not noticed a difference in you know, shopping at Aldi or shopping at Walmart and getting generic brand things. It's just been a really great way that we are able to save money by not spending more on things that we don't need to spend more on. I personally do not shop at expensive grocery stores. Like I said, we're Aldi. I love Aldi. I I'm an Aldi person or I'm a Walmart person. That's where I'm gonna shop for my groceries, okay? It's cheaper. It's cheaper and it makes me happy. Kind of going off of that, I don't go to the grocery store without a list. Most of the time I do order pickups as long as the pickup is free. I do this especially like since I've had a baby, it's just way easier if I have a big order to just drive up and they put it in my car for me. Walmart usually has free pickup. Even if I do physically go, into the grocery store, which does happen. Okay, I don't always do order pickup. I still go to the grocery store. I never go without a list. I don't just decide to go to a grocery store. Even if I decide to go to Aldi, I don't just go and wing it. Like, I have a list. I have ingredients that I want to get. It helps me not impulse buy because I'm an impulse buyer, okay? I'm a big impulse buyer. Have my list and I get what's on my list. So, a huge thing, especially saving or keeping to your grocery budget is don't go to the store without a list. You need to know what you're getting. The next one is I don't waste food. A lot of this apparently is food related. Food waste is just huge, right? And I am a notorious food waster. Previously, it's something that I've been working on and it's something that I've gotten a lot better at. There have been many times in my life where I have made a lot of food. I have meal prepped for the week. And by day six, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> I don't want to eat the same dinner for six days in a row. I don't want to do it. And at that time, I would just throw it away. And that is wasting a lot of food and in so doing, wasting a lot of money. So I now know myself. I don't want to eat the same thing for dinner for seven days in a row. That's just not something that I want to do. I like to have variety in my dinners. I could eat the same breakfast or, you know, like rotate between like the same two breakfasts or something or same couple lunches, but dinner, I want something different for dinner. So instead of meal prepping for like seven dinners, I make smaller meals. And so I will have leftovers for anywhere between like one to three days after, usually like two days after, we're eating leftovers, then on that third day, I'll make something else. So I make those smaller meals, I still eat the leftovers, but I notice that I actually eat all of the leftovers. I don't buy everything in bulk and make like chicken and rice and broccoli for seven days, and then by the end, I'm not even eating it. I actually eat, my husband and I actually eat these leftovers because we're only making, we're making smaller portions. But that doesn't mean I don't meal prep. So I meal prep in the sense that I plan out the meals we're going to have that week, and then I buy the ingredients to make those things that we're gonna have that week. So if I plan three different meals, we're going to have those three meals that week. Down to my last dinner, and let's say my last dinner is spaghetti and meatballs and salad, and I don't really feel like eating spaghetti. Well, too bad. I <laughs> For spaghetti, That's those are the ingredients that we have. I'm going to make myself cook and eat spaghetti if that's on the plan. But I'm only going to make enough spaghetti to last us like two, three days. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a difference, I think, between meal prepping and just doing the same thing for the entire week or meal prepping different meals, but making yourself eat those meals that you prepped. And if I end up not liking something, guess what? I'm not gonna have it next week. I'm not gonna put it on the docket. I'm probably not gonna have it ever again. But I like variety, and so in order for me not to waste food, I plan my meals, but I have to have something different throughout the week. And whatever leftovers we have, we make sure 
to eat, I'm not kidding, like 50 geese just flew by my window. Any leftovers that are left, we eat before we make the next meal, right? So we're not wasting food, but we're also not making the same dinner seven days for seven days in a row. Like, no, we're gonna have variety, but we're going to eat what we make and what we plan on making. Life is about balance, okay? Here's a big one. I don't use meal delivery apps. Your Uber Eats, your Grubhub, your other one, DoorDash. Any other ones? Any other ones that are out there? There's a lot now. I don't use them. They're too expensive. Eating out is already expensive. My husband and I talk about it all the time. Eating out's not even fun anymore. <laughs> Especially when it comes to fast food, don't get me started on the fast food thing, on how expensive fast food has become. At least at the time of filming, fast food is ridiculously expensive. So on top of it already being expensive, you're going to make it more expensive by doing the meal delivery thing. Because there's extra fees, there's tip for drivers. You have to tip your driver, okay? I can't believe I have to say that you have to tip your driver. It's just too expensive. It's something that I don't wanna spend money on. I would rather not spend all that extra fee and stuff and just go get it myself. Like I said, it's already really expensive, but if you're using the meal delivery stuff, it's too expensive. I don't do it. I, we deleted all the apps off of our phones. We're not even tempted. Honestly, even if we had the apps on our phone, to see the total price of getting like Chipotle delivered, we're like, no, <laughs> we just, it's not even funny how expensive it is to get Chipotle delivered to my house. No, it's not something that we do. It's a way to save money or more so, it's a way to not waste money. Meal delivery services, I think can be a huge waste of money just for that convenience. Of course, you're gonna hear me say all the time, there's extenuating circumstances, there are emergencies, okay? We all can understand that there are situations that come up that are out of our control. Like I said about the Amazon thing, meal delivery services are a great tool in case of emergencies, okay? In case of these extreme circumstances, but just not wanting to go get your own food or just feeling like eating out or not feeling like cooking, not feeling like eating the things that you meal prepped, that's more along the lines of what I'm talking about, right? Not the extreme cases where it can be a helpful tool in getting food to people. I'm talking about I don't feel like cooking tonight, so let's just door dash a pizza. No, that's something that we won't do. It just costs too much money. To us, just that's not where we want our money to go. And I feel like these convenient meal delivery services are just a way to like, it can eat up your entire monthly budget just with all the fees and tips and everything, okay? And the food is more expensive on the apps than it would be if you went in person to get the food. Like, just, I don't do it. I'm not gonna spend my money there. I also don't buy brand names most of the time. I mentioned that I don't grocery shop in expensive grocery stores. I go to Aldi and get the Aldi brands. Or if I go to Walmart, I'm getting Walmart brand groceries. I get generic brand groceries most of the time. But I'm talking even more so, let's talk clothing or furniture or anything like that. I don't buy name brand things for the brand name, okay? It's all just marketing, it really is. So if you presented me with a couch from Pottery Barn, or a dupe that's like, I don't know the brand name and it's half the price, I'm gonna go with the dupe every single time. I personally don't think the majority of brand names hold any more value than a generic brand. I am getting into more generic brand skincare, hair care, nail polish, like all of that stuff, not getting brand name things. It helps me save money. Most of the time it's like the exact same thing, <laughs> but cheaper. So I, when at all possible, I don't buy brand names. Like I said, there are exceptions. There are exceptions to clothes or specific shoes. There are always exceptions to everything, okay? I can't list all of the exceptions in this video or this video would only be a list of exceptions to this rule. But I think a blanket statement, I always try to buy generic or I always try to get a dupe of something. Or if I'm buying something secondhand or thrifting it, that's a great way to possibly get something that has that brand name at a fraction of the cost. So maybe I should change this point to like, I don't buy full price for brand name things. I don't know, I'm just gonna stick to it. I don't buy brand names. Generic brand stuff, that's, that's where it's at. I don't let myself browse when I go shopping, especially grocery shopping. If I'm grocery shopping, I don't let myself browse. This was really helpful 
for me when I was trying to learn more discipline with shopping. Like I said, I am an impulse buyer. I've always been an impulse buyer. I've seen something, I want it, I'm gonna throw it in my cart. If it's not like super expensive, I'll, oh, I'll just get it. It's like $10, it doesn't matter. But like I said, these small purchases add up. And so for me, I just wouldn't even let myself browse. I would go in, get exactly what's on my list and leave and like would not go down an aisle with any clothes, would not go down any home decor aisles. And now that I have a baby, I cannot let myself just browse baby clothes. Okay, I can't because I will buy something for her because she's so cute and these clothes are so cute and the shoes are so small. So I just don't let myself do it. I don't put myself in that position that I know I'm going to buy something, especially if we're trying to save money. When we're really trying to stick to our budget, I can't let myself browse because more often times I will just go ahead and buy something. I will impulse buy. I'm getting a lot better at it now. I am more discerning on what I buy if if it has a use in my home, if I need it right now, right this second, and how much it actually is. So I am getting better at that discerning when I do let myself browse here and there, but I'm saying as a person who has impulse purchasing issues, it's something that I'm always working on, and so I feel you if you are like me. Sometimes it's just best to not even put the temptation there and then feel bad about buying something that you know you don't need. So just not letting myself browse has made me a lot more discerning with my purchases. So it has helped me a lot. And the 10th and final tip is I don't always treat myself. This is another thing that was surprising to me how it resonated with so many people in my previous budgeting video about buying a special beverage or like a fun beverage when you're running errands just because you left your house. When I leave my house and I go run my errands, I go to the store, I go do this and that, right? You just, you're a person, you're outside and you you left your house, right? So I left my house and sometimes I feel like I deserve a fun drink. Like that's a smoothie, an iced coffee, maybe a soda. I just want to have a fun drink. I'm treating myself, I'm out and about. I was really surprised with how many people felt the same way I did. And I have told my husband about this and he doesn't quite understand, okay? He has never once thought I am going to Home Depot I should buy a smoothie. Like those thoughts don't cross in his brain. For everybody else that that resonated with, we are one, we are together, and I hear you. So I don't always treat myself when I go out and run errands. I don't buy something extra just to treat myself. I'm not saying I never treat myself. I'm not saying I never get a fun drink every once in a while, but it's a, a once in a while thing. It's not an every time thing. And I liked what some people commented on my last video of making an ice coffee before they leave so they don't buy an iced coffee out. So if that's what you want, like I will bring a Coke Zero or a Diet Coke with me so I don't feel the need to buy a fun drink. So there are ways to get around it while still feeling like you're treating yourself without spending that money, that $5 for like a freaking tall Starbucks coffee with nothing in it and it's still $5 for no reason. Instead of buying that, you're working your way around it and still treating yourself without paying that price. Even more than that, I feel the need to eat out to treat myself. If something good happens, let's go celebrate, let's go eat out. Or something bad happens or I get bad news, well, let's go eat out to make ourselves feel better. And like I've said, eating out is stupid expensive and not really fun anymore. So that has been something that I've had to retrain my brain. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen ever, okay? So if it's like my birthday or my husband's birthday, or there was a time where we got really bad news and we went to the Costco food court and we got $1.50 hot dogs. <laughs> so we spent like $3 to make ourselves feel better. When it becomes a habit of anytime anything good happens to me, I wanna go eat out to celebrate. Anytime anything bad happens to me, I need to go eat out to make myself feel better. It's breaking that habit and kind of retraining your brain to view it as, do I really wanna spend money every single time something bad happens to me? I'd be out of money. That's all I'm saying. That has helped me a lot, right? So I don't treat myself every time something good happens or every time something bad happens or just because I leave my house. Keeping the treats to 
a minimum because like I've said, little purchases add up. So those are my 10 things I don't do to help me save money, to help me stick to my budget every single month. I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope you found some of these helpful. I know that it is a learning process, okay? This is a, like a financial journey. It is a journey. It's not gonna be an overnight thing. So I don't want anyone to beat themselves up about anything, like it is, it is hard to retrain your brain and it is hard to be disciplined. And I'm saying that because I struggle with this. It's a learning process, like that's what I'm getting at. I don't want anyone to go away from this video feeling bad about themselves because, oh, well I treat myself if I go out or, oh, I shop at Whole Foods. Like everything is a journey and you know, you're figuring it out, I'm figuring it out. So this video is more uh, coming alongside and, and supporting each other, right? So if you have any other little tips of things maybe you do or don't do, leave them in the comments below. We're all trying to learn. We're all trying to save money. We're all trying to make it in this economy, okay? So let's do this all together. But that's gonna be it for today's video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.